This conference yep. will now be recorded. Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody to our March board meeting. And uh, the first thing that we've got to do, uh, all the order and review of agenda. We have one addition to the agenda, and that is Cami has something under new business regarding Janae's school, right? Uh, Goff Middle. But or Goff Middle, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, and then, so our first item is we have our new trustee, Amanda, which my screen just changed. And Amanda's picture went away. Yeah. Um, Amanda, are you there hearing us? I'm still here. Okay. Um, so turn the camera off. It. Yeah. Um, we begin with the trustee appointment of oath of office. And do you have the the agenda in front of you? Can you see that? Yes. So we have to swear you in to make it official. And okay. so you gotta you gotta raise your right hand, which you can or cannot do because <laughs> can't see you. That's okay. I'm trying to get and, back on what. <laughs> That's okay. Just, it was working. I literally did nothing, but <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Wait till the signals get tired. Um, so you <laughs> see the oath of office? Yes. Why don't you just read that? Okay. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution Constitution of the State of New York, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of East Greenbush Community Library according to the best of my ability. So noted. Now, Jill, do you have the official paperwork? I can't hear you. <laughs> I do. Okay. I can get and that paperwork and have Amanda come in and sign it. Yes. And that has to be submitted within 30 days. Otherwise, she automatically loses the position. Somewhere I read that in the rules. I also read that in the rules. Uh, I can stop by tomorrow. That's not a, if, or whenever's convenient for you this week. Just okay. you work with Jill and get it done. I don't believe I have to sign that. Do I, Jill? No. Okay. All right, Amanda, welcome aboard. Hey. Thank you. Very so, <laughs> Thank you for uh, bringing me on. <laughs> sure. We're glad to have you and looking forward to your contribution. Uh, we need a motion. Not really. Well, I know it's a motion to appoint her, but actually, I don't need a motion. I just have to appoint her with the approval of okay. the board, and the board approved that last at our last meeting. Okay, so you will appoint. I okay. I have appointed her, and she has been sworn in. Okay, thank you. Okay, Michael, so do you want in the on. minutes? Do you want in the minutes the the time frame for the appointment, since it's different? Yes. I think that would be good that the appointment is for one year, at which time if Amanda is not sick of us, she will <laughs> decide to run for the remaining remaining four years. Very good. Okay. And um, uh, Shay has joined us. Shay? Okay. Shay's here. Wonderful. He's here. All right. I have a new computer and it has a much better camera, but it did not have GoToMeeting, which I didn't figure out till I tried logging in. I know, Sorry. but your picture is very crisp and clear. It's a it's a it's a work computer that uh, I'm hijacking for for this meeting. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's move on. The first thing: approval of the minutes. They were in our packet. Did everybody get them? Mm -hmm. Did everybody review them? Actually, we got them early. Mm -hmm. 
I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes if, unless somebody has some issues with them. I'll make a motion. Wait, Lynn a? just raised her hand. A? Shay made the motion. Thank you. Second. Second by Cami. Lynn, did you have a question? Who's, who's got the second, Cami? Cami made the second. But Lynn, I saw Lynn's hand go up. I didn't know if that was for an issue. Okay. You're muted, Lynn. No, I have no nothing to add. I love the minutes. Okay. okay. <laughs> Um, do we have any objections to a, approving the minutes as presented? Not hearing any, we, we consider them passed. Okay, next item. Let's wow. move on. To the treasurer's report? Treasurer. That's you, Lynn. That's me. Okay, so you got a copy of the report which detailed what I consider the highlights of the um financial reports for the month. So we can start with the off warrant. Uh, does anybody have any questions about the off warrant, which reflected two pay periods plus the usual health insurance and utility bills? And Amanda, off warrant expenses, just so you know, they're the ones that need to be paid before the next board meeting. So the things that we can't hold, everything else we hold, and then we'll approve for signature. So these are technically already paid. So we're just seeking a motion to accept that amount, which is 104,000. We, we don't have a choice to disapprove them. Correct. Great, I was actually going to ask about that. So thank you for letting me know. Uh -huh. Any questions? No. Do we have the motion? I'll make a motion to accept the off warrant, Mary. Eileen. Mary. Mary. Mm -hmm. Yep. Do we have a second? I'll second. That's Bob. Who's the second, Bob. Bob. Yep. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? If not, is anybody opposed? Hearing silence. Carries. Okay. All right. Document five, this is the warrant. So Amanda, what this means is these are all of the bills which we are holding. The board will approve them. And then once, if approved by the board, they will then be signed by two by two members, which is usually Jill plus a board member, either the treasurer. Well, or actually, I signed the warrant. There, Oh, you signed the warrant, and then Joe I signs. Think I'm authorized to sign the warrant, and then two people yeah. sign a check. Okay. The motion is to authorize. There you go. Okay, right. so I, I listed Make some of the bigger it. expenses. If anybody has questions, but the total is in the amount of nineteen thousand seven hundred sixty-four dollars and ninety-three cents. Any questions on the warrant? Nope. And Amanda, feel free to ask questions. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm also taking a lot of notes, so if I'm quiet, that's why. It's okay. We we will go through orientation at some point. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so do we have a motion? I'll, I'll make a motion. motion. Oh, Cammy. I saw Cammy. Cammy, Cammy, Mary, Mary, Mary second. Mary second. Okay. Mary second. Yep. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? If not, anybody opposed to me signing them? Hearing silence. I take it it passes, which is good because I went to the library today and signed it. <laughs> so Jill, just does that mean I go in and come sign the checks themselves sometime in the next day or two? No. I'll sign them tonight so that they can be put in the mail in the morning. Okay. Typically, typically Lynn try to the, 
day or two before the board meeting, go sign them. Okay. And basically, the way it works is that as long as we approve it tonight, then they can go in tomorrow's mail because some of these bills have been sitting here for a month. Okay. Amanda, I'm new at Treasurer, okay? <laughs> so I'm learning to. <laughs> okay. Um, next, we have the profit and loss um, and the balance sheet. So documents uh, six and seven. Um, the year. Well, first of all, uh, I wanted to make sure you understood that in the profit and loss, the budget column has been updated to reflect the changes we made and approved last month. The year as of this date uh, is, uh, as of the date of this report, which was the 9th of March, is 19% over. And um, it, it's a kind of a new format for the report. So what we've done, Jill was nice enough to add notes um, right onto the report. So whenever things are markedly above or below the 19% of expenditure or income that we would expect as 19% of the year is over, she has made a notation. We know that income is very low, especially in the area of fines and interest, uh, both extremely under budget as we anticipate it will be because we're not collecting fines and because interest rates have plummeted. So that's that. Um, biggest news is that we did in the last month receive our public fund payments, which are the final payments for the whole year. So that boosted our income greatly to 98.4% because we got 100% of our Skodak and East Greenbush public funds. Plus we got, I believe we got the, um, yeah, the $250 from Rensselaer County as well. Thank you very much. Um, and then under gross profit, the Wi-Fi parking lot is listed and that's uh, it's not, it, that area of IT maintenance and service is still under budget, but it explains that expenditure. Uh, we are, I, I don't need to go through the report. I listed where we were over and under, but um, fundamentally, I took a look. I think we're in good shape. There's nothing I see on the P&L which offers me great concern. So I will entertain questions. Lynn, I was just curious with the o overdrive, the UHLS. Yeah. Um, so that's at 32% of the budget. Is that a quarterly? Is that why? Or? Okay. Um, you quarter Hoopla was a quarterly, but the Upper Hudson wasn't that for the whole year, Jill? So, yes, it's for the whole year. There are, we have overdrive spending that we purchase on our own, and that goes directly to overdrive. And then we have overdrive purchases that we are required to, um, we're required to per, uh, allocate a certain number of funds to be paid to Upper Hudson, actually. They go through Upper Hudson to Overdrive. And that is, um, that goes towards ordering duplicate titles or, so with, with eBooks, we have, um, every publisher is different and some publishers require you purchase a second copy or a third or fourth or fifth copy uh, and so on. Every time, it depends on usage. So let's say there's you you have 29 borrows usage rates for one title. Once you've hit 29 lending periods, you have to repurchase that title. So it's not like a physical book where you own the title. Every ebook is a leased title. And so the way that the um the way that it works with the consortium the is that we have all all 29 libraries in the consortium have allocated a percentage based on we're all required to allocate a certain percentage of the total um <clears throat> the total purchase for for reordering titles essentially we're all assigned a certain 
portion based on last year's circulation. So it's for so the year. It's for the year. And then That's we'll still funny. have overdrive ordering, but we have a large upfront chunk that goes to Upper Hudson beginning of the year. So the library That's will continue to have over, uh, there'll be overdrive expenses for the remainder mm -hmm. of the year, but it'll just be the library's cost for that. Right. So okay. that'll be orders that we that we purchase for okay. our patrons specifically. This purchase is for the entire consortium. Okay. Any other questions on the P and L? Okay, the balance sheet. The balance sheet. I mean, the major change on the balance sheet. I, I, um, you know, took a look and compared it to last month's, and really the major change is under assets, cash. The obviously the public finance line, which is where we put our East Greenbush and Sodak funds are deposited. That went up 1.9 uh, million. So there's a rather the significant increase in that can you know be seen in our total assets um you know so everything else was really very minor changes you know it, within the hundreds of dollars nothing significant on the balance sheet but our total cash balance went up precipitously with the receipt of our public money this month any questions on that If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the financials as presented. I'll make the I'll motion. Make oh, who is that? Jay. 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 I'll second. Bob second. Is that Bob? Yep. Okay. Any further comments or questions? If not, anybody opposed to approving them? No. Hearing silence, motion carries. Lynn, do you have anything else? No, I don't have anything else. Um, well, we met to talk about the convert that we're moving, the well, library's moving QuickBooks from on site to a cloud based system. So we did have a meeting on that to begin to talk about our needs as a board in addition to the staff needs, library's needs. So we had a meeting on that this week. Okay. Let's move on to the committee reports. Admin committee, Bob. So we met on March 2nd um, and discussed setting and ordering the priorities for the year. Um, in my February report, I mentioned the priorities that, that we had set for the year, um, so they're essentially the same, but we we reordered them in uh, order of you know how we want to address them. So as you can see, uh, we discussed the or the priorities include the 2021 budget amendment, uh, the SCODAC contract, business manager replacement, QuickBooks update, uh, reinstituting fines budget process preparation, uh, election preparation, review of reserves and designations, uh, salaries review, and the Upper Hudson Library uh, Association fee. Then we discussed uh, in some detail the um, we're trying to uh, come up with a formula to replace the you know the current uh, year by year basis that we're receiving our SCODAC contribution through and replacing it with a you know a, a formula that will more closely align with you know learning uh, Michael had provided some background on how the SCODAC payment has been made in the past and um, he provided several different options that we are going to consider. Um, the thinking now is that because of the complexity of this task and um, the fact that we're in an unusual situation with the pandemic uh, skewing our numbers from last year and this year, 
that we may not be able to uh, have a formula ready to present the SCODAC leadership this year, but we're going to continue to work on it and uh, make sure that we explore all options and, and get it right before we bring it to their leadership. Um, and we're going to meet again next Monday, March 23rd, to try to uh, review the various options that we have and determine which ones we can keep for now and which ones we need to discuss further. Uh, then we discussed um, search for the business man the new business manager to replace Vicky, who's retiring in, in July. And um, Jill is going to get um, a, a job description, updated job description, and the cost of the six week training overlap. And uh, we'll try to research uh, salary ranges for the position. And uh, we set a, a May 1st target date for having that position filled so that she'll be able to come in or hope the person will be able to come in and uh, train with Vicki and with Jill for at least six weeks before taking over the position. Um, then Lynn just mentioned the QuickBooks update project. Um, the one thing I would add to that is that we there, we're considering hiring a consultant to work with us on the project um, and Jill is going to find out the cost for the consultant and we can uh, discuss it and vote on it. We discussed setting a timeline for the, the next year's budget process. Um, Jill and Lynn will meet to discuss, uh, develop a schedule for the development of the 22, uh, 2022 budget. And then we also discussed uh, the process and the uh, timing of the election. Um, and we're recommending that we're, we'll hold the election on Tuesday, September 14th. Anyone have any questions, comments? And I think that's the date we will hold it unless somebody has real issues with that, the election. Yeah. So let's consider that. Can, can I ask, Jill, I'm just curious where Vicki's position, is that a civil service position or how does that work? We actually created a new position in civil service, so um, there's no list for it. Okay. Anybody have any other questions for Bob? If not, I don't think Bob, there were no actionable items, so I think we're okay, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to service committee. Okay. Uh, so service committee met on uh, March 4th. Um, we covered a couple topics. I'm going to uh, touch on some of the things we talked about with the COVID paid leave policy, but then I'm assuming, Jill, you'll want to uh, lead us through the the formal approval you know going through the details of that so I'll, I'll i'll just i'll just try to do a high level discussion of that um first thing we talked about was the pto carryover um uh the one-time pto carryover offering that we uh agreement that we made with the staff and Jill gave an update on that and said that um uh, about 17 employees had used a little under 50 uh hours total year to date so uh, I think it's going as intended where it's not some uh, rush to, you know, use hundreds of hours of, of uh, rollover um, PTO time. Um, uh, in regards to the, the COVID paid leave policy, um, I think we were working on draft three or draft four. I have in my notes. Um, we decided to uh, discuss a bunch of things and then review uh, through a Google Doc. Uh, afterwards, we touched on um, the fact that it's uh, an annual renewal, I believe that is New York State required. Um, so there's a reset uh, to the the hours that are available to um, uh, to employees that use this policy. Um, there's been uh, this was actually instituted March 18th, 2020. So this is about a year old uh, in terms of what um, uh, what the state has been uh, has been mandating. Uh, we talked about that um, in terms of communication with Jill, 
uh, that there needs to be an oral uh, notification and then a written follow-up in terms of uh, something like a doctor's note or indica an indication that uh, uh, the employee uh, um, has been diagnosed with uh, with COVID or or, or is, is is has tested positive for COVID. Um, and then we were looking for suggestions by last week. So that's where I'll leave it in terms of the high level discussion. Um, the last piece that we talked about at the meeting was our uh, ideas for different areas of advocacy. I know um, Jill created a, uh, a Google doc, Mary, uh, I saw your note today, but didn't get a chance to read it, um, uh, read what you had added, but we're trying to uh, rank uh, in a preferred order um, which organizations to uh, to potentially approach about um, uh, uh, you know creating a connection between the library board and them. So I would imagine that the next board meeting um, we'll have uh, we'll have something formal to uh, to bring to the board. I don't know if it's how we want to handle it in terms of as, as an actionable item or you know for consideration and assign you know folks to 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 consider being the advocate for the library with certain organizations. But we can. We can delve into that more uh, in more detail at the next meeting. So, Jill, I'll turn it over to you for the fun uh, job of going through the COVID policy. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, as you remember, last month we discussed a draft of the COVID paid leave policy, and it was complicated. And you have all given some great feedback and we've taken that and um, reworked and simplified this policy. I think we have a good, clear policy proposal for you. It includes all of the legal requirements to date by New York State for paid leave, um, including the most recent, um, just this week, uh, legislation that um, requires employers to provide paid time off for vaccinations. We had um, sort of anticipated that and put that in the policy. So uh, hopefully you've had a chance to read through this policy. It has gone out. Um, the entire board has had access to this via Google Doc um, since the last meeting and it was um, we requested feedback by um, by the last committee meeting um, or at, and then after the committee meeting feedback before uh, by Thursday so that we could get this out to you all. Um, so I will if if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer questions at this point. Um, but the policy looks pretty good to me and I am, um, feeling very comfortable recommending this policy for approval. Uh, I thank you for all the work. I mean, I really think it's clear. I mean, it really, this, this fourth draft seemed really clear, you know, from a, from a policy standpoint and also procedurally. Like, I think if I were an employee, I could read this and I could understand what the options were and what the requirements are. So thank you to all of you. It's really good. So this is draft four. This is draft four. What did we get in our meeting invite? Draft four. That's the pandemic thing you're talking about, Michael, I think. Okay. Yeah, I, I just, there's um, two little typos. So if I, do, I can send them to you, Jill. Um, as long, I think as long as they don't, um, you know, if we're not changing any wording or anything like that, then we can approve the policy as is and you can send me the typos after the meeting. That sounds good. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'll make okay. a motion to approve if that's what I'm waiting for. Yes. <laughs> yep. Do I have a second? Me, Lynn. Okay. I'm sorry, Anyone? who approved who approved it? Who made the motion? Shay the made the motion. Committee. Shay made the motion. Lynn yeah, seconded. As a service committee. And then Lynn and Cammie both seconded it. 
Just Lynn. <laughs> Lynn is fine. <laughs> okay. Any other questions, comments, discussions? If not, is there anybody opposed to approving this policy? Seeing just silence, motion carries. Thank you very much for everyone's input. Yeah, great job, Jill. Okay. And this has gone to staff for input as well, and everybody's feeling comfortable with this, so. Mm -hmm. in good shape. Thank you. <laughs> okay. 11 and 12, I never got. I just you have got. You, you have 12. You have 12 yeah. right now. At what time? Uh, 20 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 20 minutes ago, I was in this meeting. <laughs> you were. So I haven't read it. 20 so, minutes before the meeting, you received it. So, so you haven't you haven't read it that yet. You have an email no. waiting for you in your mailbox. So so in you got 10 minutes to fill us in on a director's report to keep on our schedule to be done by nine. Okay. Um, actually, we have. Uh, the majority of what I've been working on over the last month is um, working on our annual report for the annual report and the AUD, so financial reports and a lot of financial stuff for the month. Mm -hmm. um, in the meantime, we've been we've wrapped up our winter reading program, and I've included in here so you can you can go through and read some of the survey results and some of the feedback that we um, received from the community. Essentially, we had. Uh, just about a hundred kids that participated in winter reading. Um, uh -huh. They read 729 books and completed 1,295 activities. We um, also had uh, 157 adults who participated in the winter reading program this year. Most of them participated online, which was very new this year. In the past, most people have participated Actually, the summer reading was the first time that adults um, had the the option to participate online. Everything was just in the paper format. Um, but this year, we put the winter reading online, and only 11 patrons used the paper format. Um, mm -hmm. I included some survey results in there. Actually, instead of flipping on my end, I can go through and show you some of that on the screen. So um, that. I thought that was that was some of this was great. Um, we asked the adults after the after they participated if they wanted to use the library more often or felt like they wanted to read more often. Did they enjoy reading more or did they learn something new from what they read or how they participated? And green is strongly agree, orange is agree, and then we have the the purple is you know it, it, it really made no difference to me, um, and yellow was strongly disagree. We had some really great feedback. Um, you can read this later, but overwhelmingly, patrons, the community, the adults loved this program. Things like. It got my mind off the pandemic and gave me something positive to do. I borrowed two books on card making and made cards for a nursing home and for the nurses at St. Peter's. Um, I tried things I wouldn't have ordinarily tried. Uh, there were several facets. It wasn't just about how many books you could read in the allotted time frame. So we got some really great feedback there. Um, and then if you go back a few pages, you'll see some of you'll see participation from the children's. Uh, winter reading program we have breakdowns by grade here so you'll see that we had babies all the way up through seventh grade participating and um, we broke down the youth services uh, registrations by date we had a really neat letter uh, uh, patron feedback that came in an, an email um, one of the um, activities was to contact an author and she said that um, the mom was uh, was really overjoyed and very surprised because she 
her son wrote uh, a letter to the author, Dan Gutman, and he got an, he got a nice long letter back from um, the author and her son was thrilled and everybody was excited. And, you know, she said, James reached out to Dan Gutman, not thinking we would hear back from him because he's so busy. We were overjoyed when we got an email response from him today. We can't believe it. Thanks for encouraging us to reach out. Um, to yet another author. And I actually, on at the very end of this document, I included that feedback with the letter from, um, from the author, which is neat. So on the, at the end of my report, there's some feedback, community feedback. Um, I did include here the statistics that I gave you last month in January and updated them for February. So you can get a, uh, a sense for how things are moving. Um, essentially, you'll see that you know circulation, physical circulation, is still down from 2020 to 2021, which makes sense. Um, electronic circulation is up significantly. Um, numbers from January to February have increased a bit, but if you're looking year to year, um, there's some changes there. The Wi-Fi in the parking lot has been completed now. So we that project is done. The painting in the main library is just about done. Um, it's about, finally, it's about 95% done where we've got one area left um, to paint and then that will be finished. And how am I doing on time? <laughs> okay. Time to go. Got a couple, I got one got last a thing I want to share with you very quickly, if that's okay. You got four more Hi. minutes. I got four <laughs> minutes. Oh, excellent. Okay. So we had um, one other thing that you may or may not know is we were nominated for best library in the um, with the Times Union, their best of mm -hmm. this year, and we. Uh, voting ended March 4th, so I included some of the marketing that we did for the community out through social media, and um, we put together flyers and we made little pins for staff to wear in the library um, saying, you know, don't forget to vote for us. Uh, it, it might be a long shot that we win just because it Typically, it's a little bit of a popularity contest, and we are a smaller community in comparison to the other communities that we're up against. But I thought it was great that we were nominated. Um, mm -hmm. I certainly think that we are every bit of the same caliber. Um, the other libraries were Gilderland Colony, Clifton Park, and Bethlehem. And so we will find out um, who the winner was at the end of April. They'll publish that. And we you know we've just we've had some really positive feedback this year i it's we we on our intranet i um we have we're using microsoft teams to collaborate as a staff and we have hosted um we've created a, a channel on teams for staff to host community feedback patron feedback and so that's where i'm getting all this information from because we've we have never done that before where we were actually gathering all of that. And so now people are trying to remember when somebody says something to them to post it. And not everybody does. You don't always have time to post it. Um, so if someone emails them, they'll try to remember to put it in there. And then at the end of the month, I'll go in and I'll go through my email and, and see other emails that have been sent to me throughout the month. And we'll try to, I'll try to bring that to you each month so that we can have a record of positive and constructive criticism or negative feedback if, if and when we get it, which sometimes we do. Um, and that's how we grow is by learning about that. Um, the other, other things that uh, staff are working on right now that are different from our typical programming stuff is we have a staff committee that is working on i think you know this the staff manual update and they are um i've gone back to them they get, they came to me with a recommendation and i went back to them with some um additional questions and asked them to um consider a few other things uh like the paid leave 
um, the Family Medical Leave Act and um, a telecommuting policy and the things that we've been talking about at the board. So they are discussing some of those things now and then we'll come back and we'll are surveying the full staff and we'll come back to me with a recommendation that I can bring to the service committee. Um, and we um, also have, we had just before the COVID shutdown, we had started, you might remember a health and wellness initiative. We had put together a committee and we were supposed to do a health and wellness initiative. And that kind of took a hiatus during COVID, um, but that committee has been uh, reestablished and um, a few different people have jumped on that committee. Some of the staff members who were on the staff development committee, since we are not doing a big staff development day this year um, to refocus and work on the health and wellness initiative uh, for staff. And so that's some of the internal stuff that's going on behind the scenes um, just to keep keep it positive and you know because staff are working hard and doing a great job for the community and hopefully um, they know that hopefully they feel the support coming their way from the full board because I know you support them and from me and um, I know I'm you know they make it look easy <laughs> that all of this stuff is easy and they, uh, they make this place run. So I, I will happily uh, answer any questions. And if you have questions about any of the data that I sent you, I will answer questions over email or, question, or um, phone calls. And I can always include in next month's um, report any uh, clarifications that I need to make. Anybody have any questions for Jill? Just to clarify the agenda, did you say that this the, the snapshot and the monthly report are document number 12? And not yes. document? The, uh, well, the snapshot is not in there. I included data in there, but not the snapshot. Okay. You actually are going to get a quarterly report next month because next month is April. And so you'll get a quarterly report with all of that data. If you'd like a um, uh, actually, you won't get it until the next, the following month. I can send you the snapshot. I can create a snapshot. That's easy. I have all the data. Well, I just so wanted to that. just so we have it. Let me send it to you so we have it on the record on file. Okay, I just wanted to clarify. So, are there is there document eleven and document twelve? Is that or no? Document eleven, right? The only document right now is twelve, which is the director's report. Document eleven actually um, is there was an an addition of an admin committee report, and I named that eleven. Okay. A little out of order, but okay. Okay. Anything else for Jill? If not, let's move on to the liaison reports. I don't see Charlie, so Liz, you're gonna do it. Uh, your lips are moving, but I can't hear you. Mm -hmm. Can't hear it. No. Mm -mm. Hi. There you, you want go. Me to say something about. I know. You want me to say something about friends? You can. <laughs> okay. Liz, um, Liz can't talk we to had us. A, um, Funny, it's green. We we talked about it last time. Uh, we we met Saturday, and. Um, in preparation for a um, uh, book sale, a small book sale this week, um, we're going to, uh, Charlie's going to send out um, emails just to friends uh, 
allowing them to bring in one box or bag of books, and then we will have bundles that can they, can, um, they can purchase. I got that email. Okay. Liz, are you on now? I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I think I just had to do something on my settings. So you can hear me. Yep. Okay. Yes. Sorry. And I appreciate that, Eileen. Mean, thank you for jumping in. Um, yeah. So Charlie and I decided that we would split these because, you know, he has a family. So um, he's going to do all the meetings that are after a friend's meeting, and I'll do the odd ones. So, um, uh, right, so what Eileen started to talk about was we're going to do, uh, we're going to slowly, slowly start opening up for donations, and that's going to be this Saturday from 11 to 1, and we're going to quarantine them and follow the procedures that the library uses to make sure that everybody's safe, and at the same time have another one of our grab-and-go pre-selected, pre-sorted $5 bag book sales and during the same period of time. And then um, depending on the demand and how that goes this week, we're going to talk about uh, maybe, you know, having some sort of a regular schedule to allow for more donations to come in. And also, um, Plan for uh, presence at the uh, farmer's market uh, during the summer and um, other types of outdoor, more uh, open air types of plans until we can get back to having the traditional book sale. So um, the way everything is going, um, you know, uh, we're still doing very well for you. So I think that's good. Um, the raffles have continued. The last one was the um, Valentine's Day raffle that I think wrapped up. Yeah, I think I told you about that last month, or Charlie did. Um, then uh, we just had another donation, thank you, Eileen, for um, an Easter basket of yummy chocolates from Lint. So you'll see that be advertised shortly. And then um, so two staff members had reached out to offer, um, oh, Jill, are you showing us the Easter basket? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, two staff members actually reached out with an interest to put together a basket for a Mother's Day raffle. So I thought that was really wonderful. Um, and then finally, as many of you know, because I'm sitting here looking at your checks, um, our renewal mailing went out for the year, and um, we've gotten a really great response so far. I've got, uh, where's my number? 152, you know, probably about 170 responses so far. Um, many with generous additional donations on top of their membership um, fee for the year. Some people, I'm looking at you. And um, the, uh, we'll have to see where we shake out because they're still coming in slowly, um, or a little bit slower at this point. Um, so once we see where we are, probably towards the end of this month or the beginning of next month, we'll do a follow-up um, contact for it. So our next meeting is um, the same as yours, uh, April 20th at 6.30. So. We'll see you there if you can join us. If not, then we'll report back to you then. Sounds good. Anybody have anything for Liz at the Friends? If not, Holly, you're up. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Um, I have quite a few things to share tonight. So I'll start with um, tomorrow evening. At 7.30, where the town board is having a public hearing for comment on the draft plan that has been developed for the Police Reform and Reinvention Collaborative. As you know, you probably all know that the um, executive order that Governor Cuomo issued for each town and any city that has a police agency to perform and like review the police, the current police force policies, procedures, strategies, 
um, and develop a plan of improvement for the community that included, um, you know, a re a re uh, review of policies and a redevelopment of certain things that might improve community engagement and foster trust and, um, you know, um, address any racial bias um, or disproportionate policing. So the draft plan has been up on our website and tomorrow evening we're taking public comments and next Wednesday the town will be adopting the plan. It has to be um, adopted and ratified or ratified no later than April 1st. So that's the most pressing thing on our agenda and the plan's up there for, you know, for comment. And I don't know, it's right on our website. People should, you guys should go on and re read it. It's pretty interesting. It's put a, a lot of people put a lot of work in the in the plan. So um, we had a committee of community stakeholders that have been meeting pretty much every Tuesday night since I think December, right before the holidays. So we have that. We have um. East Greenbush is partnering with Bethlehem and Troy um, to hold household hazardous waste disposal program with us, Bethlehem and Troy is for 2021. So the events are scheduled for April, July, August, and October. The first one's coming up April 17th in Troy. And we can, I mean, I'm sorry, it's April 17th in Bethlehem at the Town Highway Garage in Selkirk. And you must pre-register, but um, it's we can East Greenbush residents can go to Troy or Bethlehem and vice versa. So it's the opportunity to dispose of hazardous wastes. And um, the registration website is on our town. Um, the, the link for it is on our town website. So our actual day at our transfer station is in, is coming up in August. But I'll probably talk a little bit more about that as that gets closer. Um, we also, we, as far as a couple of things with the Albany Hudson Electric Trail, the, what is it, the Hudson River Valley Greenway has agreed to construct a parking lot behind Town Hall to access the trail at that juncture. Um, it'll probably be 10 to 12 parking spaces and um, the, as you probably all know, the parking, the parking to access the trail is a little bit um, limited. So that's going to offer another access route for people in East Greenbush. And one of our police officers, Officer Ashley, applied for a, a grant for information, a bicycle grant actually, for funding. And we, he also he was approved for, it, and we're receiving some funding for it to hold a bicycle rodeo, which is like a community event for. Um, Bicyclic, bicyclists um, to learn about safety and education, bicycle education um, that has to do with the use of the trail and just safety uh, measures in general, um, traffic enforcement and education regarding the tr crossing areas in East Greenbush, of, of which there are several. Um, so we have those two things going on with the trail. Also, I had let you guys know a couple months ago, maybe about our, the, our, um, the purchase of a drone package and that's been used several times already it's been real successful it's helped with locating missing people and people um who are you know are possibly do in at risk for doing harm to themselves so we it's been used in east greenbush rensselaer pd has used it also and um we're pretty happy with that with the use of that um we have an Easter egg hunt scheduled this, not this Saturday, it's the 27th, our community services department, um, the annual Easter egg hunt. And this year it's at Town Park from eight to 12 with, um, you know, protocols in place for the pandemic. Well, each, each age group is gonna have like a time slot for each age group. So there'll be spacing and things like that. Sign up is through our town website again through the community service department. And um, what else? Oh, our canine. We are starting up with our canine unit, which last was the last time we had a K, actual canine unit, 2007. But 
So next week, next month in April, we're gonna be the officer who's assigned to the unit. We'll be picking up uh, the German, our German Shepherd and beginning a 12 week school with his partner towards the end of the month, April 26th. We're excited about that for next month. And um, that's all I have for tonight. Great. So thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Any questions for Molly? Where's Tom? There he is. Tom, hey, you're on. Thanks, mm -hmm. Mike. Uh, first off, congratulations, Jill, on being nominated for Best Library. That's extremely cool. That is a remarkable achievement. Very, uh, very, very positive uh, information. Was, I voted a couple of times, so hopefully that was enough to bring us over the uh, over yeah. the top. Um, <laughs> April, the county legislature recognized National Library Week uh, or declared uh, Rensselaer County as part of National Library Week, uh, April 4th through the 10th, I think it is. By resolution, our sales tax revenue remains very strong, um, much better than some of our surrounding counties. But really good, the real good news is uh, we've had a series of meetings with Senator Schumer and his staff regarding the American Rescue Plan, uh, particularly in regards to state and local aid uh, uh, packages. And uh, we found out that the Rensselaer County is going to receive almost $31 million. Uh, which can be used uh, for a lot of, uh, there's a lot of eligible uses for it. Water and sewer, funding for lost revenues or budget cuts caused due to the pandemic. It's very flexible. It hopefully will, it, it does include uh, expansion of broadband, which is uh, lacking in certain areas of the county. So it'll give us an opportunity to really stretch out our uh, internet connections throughout the county, which is vital in this era where a lot of things are happening uh, virtually, particularly, uh, as far as schools go. So that'll be a really uh, strong shot in the arm. And I'll say one thing about Senator Schumer, it's very good to have a uh, Senate Majority Leader from New York because <laughs> he really brought some uh, things home for us. Uh, as an aside, we estimated that the town of East Greenbush, and uh, Holly, you can uh, correct me if you like, is gonna receive probably about 1.78 million. Uh, town of North Greenbush will get about 1.34 uh, million. So towns are going to be in pretty good shape. I don't know off the top of my head of what Skodex is going to have, but you know that might be a factor when you have your discussions with them about perhaps library funding uh, in the future. Uh, so far, so good. We're holding steady. Uh, some of the uh, cases are beginning to go down. We're very fortunate for that. Unfortunately, we had another death uh, today due to COVID in the county. Uh, I think that makes our 103rd uh, death, which is... Uh, any death is too much, but hopefully this is starting to be getting to level out. Part of the uh, Schumer American Rescue Plan, uh, what he indicated to us, is that the federal government is going to set up vaccination st uh, sites throughout New York State. So hopefully that will uh, enable people who haven't gotten vaccinated or haven't been eligible for vaccines uh, to get vaccinated very, very quickly. That's about all I've got. Thanks. Any questions for Tom? Any comments? Tom, I only wanted you to know, let the county know, that Hudson Valley Center worked really well. It's been a great partnership. They, they've done I, a trip. I got both my shots there and it really worked well. It was very smooth and no problems and easy to do. That's great. I'll pass it along. And also it's been a great benefit to Hudson Valley students as well, particularly in some of the medical programs. Mm. And the numbers of volunteers that have uh, served at Hudson Valley at the site have been, it's been, the response is very, very encouraging, very incredible. Rensselaer County is a giving county and people really work together throughout uh, throughout this. Mm. But I'll pass it along, Michael. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Upper Hudson. Upper Hudson continues. Upper Hudson, everybody's feeling a little better this month than they have been. Uh, uh, the budgets are, are starting to come back. Uh, Upper Hudson, Jill, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, the budgets from the Senate and the House came back and some of the cuts that the governor had put in, which this is the process it goes through every year, were restored. They restored uh, construction grants things like that. Now they still have to negotiate them to be final, but people are feeling pretty good. Overall, I think Upper Hudson's gonna be down about 5% uh, 
somewhere in that range from what they were before the COVID last year. Uh, last year, they were down 20 and 20% 20 or 22%, and that money actually is coming back to them. So uh, they've been able to restore pretty much everything that they had before. And uh, the big thing they were going to cut is delivery to some of the outlying libraries, which are further out, the small libraries, that all has been negated and they're back into normal operations. Uh, the other thing with Upper Hudson was that uh, I'm the rep at Upper Hudson. Um, I think I'm the only library president who's on the board there. Uh, and it was interesting because Albany, Albany has a rep that um, they, ha they have a permanent seat on the board because they're one of the large libraries by some definition 15, 20 years ago. Uh, the, the bigger libraries are there. At the time, we were not what we are today, so we are still considered a mid-sized uh, Rensselaer County library, and that's the seat that I have. Um, the Albany rep uh, became the president of his trustees, and he immediately resigned, And but they substituted somebody else, and I was wondering whether I should do the same because sometimes I am conflicted um, and I have to decide I'm up for election this year. We have to decide that and we have to do it fairly soon. The process is that it doesn't guarantee us a continuated seat. Uh, I found that out in the last couple of weeks. What they do is they put it to the other mid-sized libraries in Rensselaer County, which are um, us, um, Sand Lake, North Greenbush, and uh, what's the last one, Jill, do you know? I think it's Rensselaer. No. Oh, no, no. Troy. Troy. No, Troy, Troy has a seat. Oh, they're uh, large? They're, la they're considered the large, and uh, it's uh, Brunswick. Oh. So really, our sort of equals are, are very different from us. Um, the process would be is if I decide not to take the seat again, they will just uh, put it out to all four and see whoever comes up with somebody and then somehow make a decision. Uh, so it might come to us or not. I think it's fairly important that we try and keep that seat. So I would like somebody from, if I decide not to do it, there's somebody from our library to step up and at least so that we have somebody to try and put into the position. Um, when I got the seat, I think it had been vacant for two years. Uh, it, people don't normally step up for it, but that's something that we've got to do in fairly in the next couple of weeks, get set up how we want to proceed with that. And Cami, I'm sort of, backpedaling a little here because I don't want to push you into it. I know we tried to do that a couple months ago. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, so, I'm, in, I'm interested. Okay. If you are, you then, then we should talk and we'll talk yeah. offline. Yeah. But that's, that's the one thing mm. we've got to do. Um, mm -hmm. It'd be worthwhile for us to stay on the board level involved. Now, Jill is the director representative on the board, mm -hmm. but I don't know how long Jill's term is. And I assume they rotate that when your term is up. So it would be good for us to keep somebody on there. Other mm -hmm. than that, there's not much new um, at Upper Hudson. They just continue to sort of forge along on doing their thing. Anybody got any questions? Okay, moves us down to item number nine, old business pandemic response plan. Now, from one email that somebody wrote, I noticed that what is this and does this replace our response plan and so on and so forth. This is a generic response plan that the state is requiring all organizations to do to have there for the next pandemic. So it does not replace our current plan. And 
So what Jill, I believe you did, and I'm gonna turn this over to you, is created a, a generic plan that sort of would become the guide for the next pandemic, whoever is involved, to use as a starting document to go from. Correct. Thank you. So that being said, as a generic plan, um, it is in some areas quite vague um, and in other areas it's specific because there are specific requirements that have been legislated by the governor. And so this plan incorporates all of those requirements um, and it also some of the things, some of the lessons that we've learned through this pandemic uh, in our approach and how um, we did things, which I, I do feel like we um, handled it very well, considering that we pivoted, uh, you know, with very little um, prep. We just recreated the library almost overnight. Um, but one of the things that this plan does is it identifies a committee of uh, several committees. It, it puts in place several committees to um, put into place any future um, specific plan. And so it identifies certain staff who would be um, tasked with being on each committee and and then I did add, based on some feedback, um, or the role of the board in this document. Um, I think originally um, I had put the board up at the um, as the uh, in this in this category here in this paragraph under administration that the director is authorized by the board and the board approves the plan um, because the library board is in charge of um, policy and finances for the library. Um, and that if anybody is, una if the director at that time is unable or unavailable to administer the plan, the administrative authority should be passed to the president of the board of trustees. But that doesn't, just because the operations fall on the library staff, that doesn't remove the board from pandemic planning and being involved in decision-making along the way, this plan um, puts into place who's in charge of what, who, because there there is a lot of behind the scenes it, um, operational work that has to happen. And so that's what this, that's what this does, this plan. Um, it's a 14 page document, it has gone uh, a draft has gone before staff at the same time as it went before you. I've received very little feedback from um, from staff. Uh, so I would, I'm happy to take questions if anybody has any any questions. Jill, this was the one where I was, I wanted to make sure it says it's the draft itself, the response plan says it's draft two and it's dated March 4th, but mm -hmm. your memo to us indicates that it's a final draft and you were looking for input, input by March 11th and that this would be draft three. So I just wanted to make sure that that might just be. That is a, a footer that needs to be updated. Okay, good. Um, That's what Mary was hoping. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to I'll and have to update I'll have to update the footer. Sorry, I missed that. Because when when you're doing it in Word, you don't see the footer. Yeah, and technically we need to approve this tonight because this is supposed to be done April first. Correct. This is like Holly's we police it thing. Correction. We can approve it with corrections. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
But this is like Holly's police thing that had to be done by April 1st, I believe. Correct. And so, you know, this can be that this really should be a living document. This is not something that's yeah. going to sit, you know, when you if you want to make amendments. I mean, first of all, the document says that after the board approves it, it's going to go to the staff for feedback and then the board will um, respond to that feedback. So that's if there is feedback of substance that will come back to the board and you would have a chance to um, consider that feedback and decide whether you want to amend it or not. If you have any additional feedback that you have not given to me, we could bring it back to you and amend it. And then, of course, during any future pandemic, you could absolutely amend it. <laughs> Well, I think it's one of those things you could look at periodically and decide if it needs updating. Right. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, if you change staff, you change all kinds of things. But so, where would this live? Would this live in the policy area, or yes, yes? Okay. That's where I, where I think it would be. Okay. Anybody have any comments or questions? Any feedback on it? If not, can we have a motion to approve it? I'll make a motion to approve it. Yeah. Mary? Lynn. 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 Pandemic response plan. And Cammy is seconding it, I think, with a raise. Hand. Seconding it. Cammy, uh, Lynn, Lynn was the first? Yep. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. Then I'm listening for any people who oppose it. Not hearing anybody, motion carries. Okay. Hey, that takes care of that. That was our old business. Uh, calendar, Jill. Okay. So the calendar um, has been revised for you and um, Mary took a look and made an edit. She made a great catch. And I think we've got everything on here. All of the dates that we've changed, we have we have determined the annual election and budget date there. And um, the only thing that is to be determined, and, and the public hearing date in July, July 20th. So those have been added. We have taken out the staff development day since that's not happening this year. And then we have um, we have determined tentative weeks right now that will hold budget committee meetings. And we talked about we need to have a kind of a roll call of who's interested in participating from the board in the committee meetings so that we can determine if we are holding the meetings um, during the day or in the evening. And I'm happy to do both if anybody's working during the day and they want to be a part of it, then we'll hold the meetings during in the evening. Um, so that's something that we can do over, I think we can do that over email. I don't think we need to discuss that as a whole group, um, mm -hmm. just to get a roll call of who's interested in participating because any, anybody on the board is eligible to participate in the budget committee meetings. The treasurer is the chair of that committee. Okay. I think it looks as good as we can make with the knowledge we have today. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if something happens, we can change it. So you need a motion? I'll make a motion yep. to approve it. I'll make it to approve it. It's Mary Aileen. Mary? 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I have a second? No second. That was Bob. Bob? Yep. Any further discussion, comments, or questions? If not, I'm listening for someone to object. Not hearing anybody, it carries. Uh, Jill, I'm gonna ask that you separately email a calendar to everybody. So that we just sort of get an email, I can print it out and we can have it. Cause that's one I still keep in paper. Mm -hmm. okay. Will we begin now that Amanda's joined us, will we also be getting a board list with contact we information? We should, updated board list, yes. Good, mm -hmm. good point. Okay, next item. I don't remember that I saw a document 16, but uh, library hours and services, Jill. Okay. So um, I have a list here of some of the service updates that we put in place at the last board meeting, I believe. Um, we increased Saturday hours and then there was a tentative plan of what some of the future updates would be and then we have um, put in place some of those uh, service updates uh, which include March 1st we reduced the quarantine time for materials to up to 48 hours and that was um, something that was uh, recommended by the Upper Hudson Library directors and the Upper Hudson changed the minimum quarantine requirements. They they decreased them from um, three days to two days. And then we, on March 2nd, we increased our capacity to 20 in the main library and 10 in the children's room. We, uh, we also unlocked the children's room bathroom and the main library still has a keyed entrance. On March 8th, we added Monday hours from nine to four. Um, and then um, coming up, we are looking at adding copier and fax uh, on the 22nd, Ex uh, extending our capacity to 25 on the 29th. This is all pending, you know, that the numbers still continue to go in the direction that they're going. We'll add computers April 5th. And then we are planning, the target date is, is April 12th at this point to, have a second holds shelf live. So right now everybody's picking up their holds at the drive through window. And previously before the pandemic, um, the community could pick up their holds at the circulation desk. We would like to have two locations permanently. Um, so we're working with Upper Hudson on how to do that. Originally it was uh, we were informed that it was a very simple process that they would consider us a branch and now we're finding that there's a little bit more a little bit more to that it's making it a little bit more complicated so that date may um, shift a bit and we have shifted um, some of these dates but the items in bold have been discussed at committee meetings but have not been officially approved yet the only thing that's been officially approved is the February 27th. So we need to um, approve this. And I mean, some of the approval is a retroactive approval since- We did discuss them in both committees. As I see this now, we discussed them in both committee meetings and had enough people feel positive about them that we, we figured that today, this would just be a formality. Mm -hmm. So if there, are, we we do need an official, uh, an motion. official motion. Yep. We'll make a motion. It's Lynn. Adopt the expanded, revised COVID services and hours plan. And that's Lynn. That's Lynn. Lynn. Do I have a second? Well, I just have a question because one thing I don't see on this, uh, Jill, is the 
time limit for patrons to be in the library? Right, we haven't changed it yet. Um, and I don't have a, a recommended date yet for that, but that is, you know, something that will come, but we yeah. don't have that yet. So if the numbers keep going down, you know, I'd like to do that sooner rather than later, but let's- what, Where are we now? Are We're we at 30 minutes. We're yeah. at 30 minutes. Back to the 30 minutes, okay. We're back to 30 minutes. Do I have a second? I'll, I'll second. second. I heard it's a second. But uh, Cami raised her hand, so that's the Cammy. one I noticed. No, that's fine. That's your Cami. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, with, with the screen like this, the pictures are pretty small. <laughs> can, uh, can I, Jill, can I? When you add the computers, does time increase for computer users? It'll still be no, 30? No, not yet. Not, not necessarily. It, it's, it's, it's possible, but at this point, not necessarily. So we can repeat this whole process again in April <coughs> at the two committee meetings if Jill has more and then confirm it at the board meeting, mm -hmm. okay. depending on how things go. So I have a motion and a second. Any more questions or comments? Not hearing anything, that passes. Anybody have any other old business that we haven't covered? If not, new business, under new business, Cami sent something out today on a golf project. Cami, mm -hmm. the floor is yours. All right, thank you all. And I, you know, I, feel bad that I didn't have a chance to discuss this with the service committee. Um, I, I, I really just, this was on a whim over the weekend. I had this idea and I was waiting for the gentleman at, at Goff Middle School to get back to me and he did, but it was today, like right before I, I asked about, you know, coming on and on the agenda. So I would have uh, put it through the service committee first because we were talking about partnering with other organizations in our town. So I got the number for Jamie and maybe people know him. I don't know. Uh, Jamie Eggleston, uh, who is a teacher over at Goff Middle School. He's also in charge of the school's backpack program where uh, the backpack is filled for the weekend and uh, the kids have something to eat. Normally in, I asked him how many, uh, and, and in normal times, he has 23 to 25 students that, that take home a backpack. Right now he has about 15. So what I thought was we could partner and add a book into the backpack. And what he would do Number one, he loved the idea. He loved it so much. Um, and he thought he thought it would be really great. Uh, he says, you know, kids, we have to just keep expanding their their knowledge and you know, you know, they really don't get a chance that often to to read for pleasure because they're doing their schoolwork and then they have other things going on. So um, he says, and you know, the, the library's there, they don't have, you know, like every book and, you know, it's not a great selection. So this was a really, uh, you know, it, it, he said it would be, you know, well received. So what he thought he would do is contact the students in the backpack program ask them what uh, genre they would be interested in, kind of give them like a top three wish list top give him and then he would get back to me and um you know i would pull like you know or whoever me i'll just say me um we'll pull the books and um bring them to the school i thought we you know get like a bag like a carry bag which just you know drop off and pick up in the same bag so you know just keep it simple and um you know the kids would have those books now they're not going to read them for over the weekend so no one think that you know they'll finish the book in the weekend but um they would have the book 
So at some point they would get the book, they would bring it back when they were finished and you know they'd move on to another book. Um, he was wondering about, well, what if they don't bring the book back? So I said, well, you know, kind of naive. I'm thinking, you know, we're only dealing with 50, say 15 to 25 kids. I mean, I think we could, you know, you know, keep on them, follow up. I also thought that might be um, with each book read or maybe with like the third book read, something like that, we can have a little incentive and try to get gift cards or something like that donated. Um, so there's like an incentive, you know, to to read the, the book and um, to, to bring it back. Um, he said it's really tough during the school breaks and summer. Uh, you know, I get more so for food, um, which when he told me what's in the backpack, I, I really wanted to uh, work on that first. But he said, you know, don't worry about the food. Um, you know, we, they get donations and, you know, they, they do get some things added. So it's not as um, small as what he was telling me. Um, uh, but he, he really wanted to keep going with the books and, you know, during the school break, I don't know if we can get this, I don't know if we can get it off the ground or if you guys, you know, are for it, against it. I don't know how you feel about it. Uh, March 30th to April 13th is the school break and, um, yeah, it's kind of a long time and it would be nice, um, if, if we can make it work and, you know, grab the books for the kids uh, during that time. Um, the summer yeah. is also, but you know, the summer they're not in school, so it's different. What if we took books from the um, the books we have for the book sale, and then we don't have to worry about them being returned? True. I wanted to see if we could fulfill, uh, you know, their kind of wish list first. Like, if someone says, "I really want to read the first Harry Potter book," and that's not in the your donation, then I would pull the book you from the shelf. You generally have about a million Harry Potter books oh, just saying, like, for your. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. Um, that's just an example. Of, right. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, the books are the books are pretty current. In the, you know, they there's a great variety okay. in the books that we get in for the book sales. Mm -hmm. We probably wouldn't have to have any, we wouldn't have a whole lot of problems finding uh, the different genres that they would want. It'd be, it's just a suggestion. Okay, yeah, that's 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 fine. Uh, what I'm I think going to do is, is email Jamie tomorrow to let him know that I talked about it tonight yeah. at the board meeting. I said it was so great that you he got in touch today because of board meetings today. And um, just, you know, kind of give him an overall feel like, is this something that you want to do? And, you know, I'm happy to kind of get it off the ground for to, to see if we could try to do it for the school break that's coming up. So it's cut in a couple of weeks. Liz, Liz, what would you think of, you know, this weekend we're going to be there mm -hmm. in the in the um, shed, the book shed. Mm -hmm. What would mm -hmm. you think of picking out some books for the different mm -hmm. age groups? Yeah. Well, I mean, I certainly feel like we probably have a good number of books that we could pick from. The, the slight pitch, and I don't want to be a Debbie Downer here, but... Um, because we're sort of space restricted at this point in terms of where we can do our sorting and whatnot. Um, I'm just, I'm a, I, I have a small concern about getting through the pile of boxes that we have because they're sorted very generally. I, under I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that we could certainly take a look this weekend and sort of see, get the lay of the land and sort of maybe do a very, very rudimentary inventory to get a sense of what we've got. And then we can connect back with Tammy. 
Is that what you prefer, Cami? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Cami, my suggestion is that if we want to make this a longer term type program, that we send it to committee. Now that committee doesn't work for your one for this time. I know. Mm -hmm. So and my suggestion for that is that you work with Liz and the friends mm -hmm. for this one. And so this first book will be a basically a donation to them. Okay. And we can have a discussion because number one to me it could become can we create a a library card for this group mm -hmm. that sort of creates the responsibility because you're taking a pack of books to them. Mm -hmm. And and so we do track them because if we take books off the shelf, they really need to be checked out. We can't just take them off. So there, there's sort of mechanics that I think we could work out, but I think it's all stuff that can be worked out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if I yeah. could just jump in there, um, I think that this is a fabulous partnership idea that we um, can absolutely figure out the details on how to do it. Um, but I would agree that there's a little bit of logistical stuff to work out. We we've, we've worked with them in the past to to get books over there with the friends to coordinate that. Um, but that is not um, specific to their to anybody's interests, which I totally see what you're saying, Cami, with wanting to connect kids with books that they're actually interested in. Mm -hmm. But we also have a program at the library. Um, we have two programs that I can think of right now that staff run, but also have volunteer connections that I think would be nice to, to model after. We have our book bundle programs, which are, you know, our librarians will curate titles based on interests. So I think that's something that we could connect with. And then we also have our Books with Wheels program, which right now is an outreach for senior citizens who are homebound, but we have volunteers who right now the volunteer is Kevin and Kevin gets the books. You know, it's a big bag of books that are curated by the librarian, by Catherine and Kevin brings them over to Hawthorne Ridge. But that's the same kind of, this is the same kind of partnership. You know, if I think we should all be connected and those children's librarians should be a part of this, but we would certainly welcome and love the, um, you know, the partnership. And I don't want to take away from your idea, but I think there's a way that we could do it so that it doesn't, um, so that we can create a, a almost a, 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 a practice or a proceed, you know, it's, we need to treat it as a systemic kind of partnership so that it doesn't rest with one person and we start something that people are, expecting and then it falls apart if someone you know if you were to walk away from it that it's no longer a thing mm -hmm. um, unless we're looking at it as a one-time you know or a short-term thing and then run with it <laughs> mm -hmm. so that's all i would throw out and i, I okay think so it would be great. can we do that can we shift it mm -hmm. to the committee to mm -hmm. to the committee but if you really want to get it going for this end of the month and I can see why you'd want to do that but you work with uh, Liz and the friends okay perfect thank you that what way you, you can me? do something what committee will handle it and Eileen yeah. service the service committee. service committee will handle I will be it. there yep yeah and maybe at that meeting I couldn't even invite um our head of youth services to the meeting so that she could be a part of it Mm-hmm. If that would be okay. Great. Okay. Is that are we it? forming a separate are we forming a separate committee or no. are we referring to service or admin? We're service. referring it to service. To service, okay. Sounds good. Okay. And Shay has his mic muted, so we're not hearing him swear about it. Oh no. <laughs> I'm writing it down so that between Jill and I we make sure it's on the agenda. So it okay. we'll we'll get to it in April. I gotta say, Shay, your camera is really good. I you can probably <laughs> see everything on the back of my wall, my Manning jersey, all sorts of stuff That's that just fuzzy. Uh, I see all that. 
<laughs> okay, does anybody have anything else? Yeah, I want to know what kind of computer you got, Shay. Well, this would we for eight and a half years because we're a startup i have used my personal uh mac computer and uh oh. as we're kind of making a transition uh we got to get some company computers so i got a macbook air uh with uh some very nice upgrades over my 2012 uh macbook pro so gotcha okay thank you night okay if okay, we got to adjourn. We need a motion to adjourn. That's why I'm entertaining now. Thank you. Well, I'm like nobody's going to do it. Was that Mary? Oh. Yep, I'm making the motion to adjourn. I'll, I'll second it. Hey, that Who's Lynn. seconding? Lynn. Lynn. Lynn? Mm -hmm. Sounds oh, nine good. 907. 907. Oh, good. Amazing. Okay. Thank you all. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Stay safe. Bye. Bye. Bye, Amanda. I hope your first meeting went well. Bye. How did we do? Oh.